Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Lifetime Legacy Lawyer podcast. I am your co-host, Thomas Vick, joined by the other co-host on the podcast, Seth Wilson. Seth, how are you today? Hey, Thomas, I am well. We are uh, rolling through this fall, and around here, I don't know about you, but I was a little disappointed that we didn't get more fall-ish weather, and we went almost directly to winter weather. Yes. My yeah. goodness, seeing snow flurries on on uh, Halloween thirty first. <laughs> yes, yep. <laughs> I was just kind of like, "Come on, Indiana, just just do a slower gear shift or something." I don't know. I don't like going straight into fall. We have not had a mild, just cool Halloween in so many years. I think last year or the year before, I was out trick or treating, and it was probably under 10 degrees. It was so cold. So <laughs> we're due we're due for some nice weather next next I year. Was, I, I agree and I was so tempted to drive the trick or treat route this year cuz it was like I just don't know that I want to get that cold, but then I saw, I saw snow out there. I saw my brother posting he lives in northern Indiana and it was like almost full on winter storm weather and I said, you know, it it wasn't quite as bad here in central Indiana, but <laughs> Man. Oh, it's it's fun but yeah we're looking looking forward to this fall and you know just as we get closer to thanksgiving and thinking about family members and getting together with family members i thought it'd be good for us to kind of talk through what are you know times to think about that next level planning kind of on that elder law side of things and as you know providence has it your blog post has an aptly titled five times to consider an elder law attorney. So I thought we'd go through that today. So Excellent. tell us, kind of walk us through, Thomas, when's a good time to start that elder law planning? Well, uh, an elder law attorney, maybe we could actually start with what is an elder law attorney. An elder law attorney is an attorney that deals with issues that are unique to elderly people. And there are a lot of different kinds of elder law attorneys. There, There could be an elder law attorney that does nursing home litigation and is sort of more of a personal injury attorney. Um, you know, and then there are others that sort of focus on special or uh, spe special needs trusts or social security disability appeals. Um, where I sort of focus is uh, I do some special needs planning, but also uh, Medicaid asset protection and um, other attorneys will, will do veterans benefits, aid and attendance and things like that. So there are uh, sort of some niches there in the field of elder law, but there are some uh, particular times when it is appropriate to consult with an elder law attorney. And one could be as simple as talking to an elder law attorney about one's estate planning. You know, what kind of issues are there uh, from an elder law standpoint in doing estate planning? Um, you know, estate planning consists of powers of attorney, trusts, wills, and all of those kinds of things. And there are some provisions that an elder law attorney, for instance, will put into a, a power of attorney document that a non elder law attorney would not put in there. You know, it, one of those might be, you know, allowing more generous gifting to take place um, so that if the, you know, the the grandmother or what, what have you needs to go into a nursing home, the power of attorney, the adult child might be able to protect assets from long term care and be able to get the the loved one on Medicaid sooner and be able to protect assets. So uh, a gifting strategy is important for that. And an elder law attorney knows those details more so than, you know, a, a non-elder law attorney. So that would be one instance just to do estate planning. Yeah. And I think that's a really important point because in my practice where I help folks not on the elder law side, that's why our um, work together has been so helpful, is we can bridge that gap between 
what is your normal estate planning? And then as you're thinking about some of these longer term issues that may arise and the power of attorney and the gifting power under that power of attorney is such an important distinction because you want to be very careful about that for someone who is healthy and, and running through life. You don't want to necessarily give someone else that authority, but there is a point in time where that reality and that potential for that family may need or may necessitate a change to the strategy of the estate plan. And that's one of those big components. And I think one of that situations there is unfortunately that comes up in the incapacity context where a dementia diagnosis may be received, but most of the time the individual is still able to handle his or her own decision-making. And there's sort of a continuum on which that comes into play. And so I think that's a big, uh, really important point to understand the distinction between kind of your base level estate plan and what an elder law focused estate plan may look like. Yeah. And I'll just add, as far as like what an elder law attorney can do trust wise, an elder law attorney can guide you through setting up a Medicaid asset protection trust to, for instance, protect the, the principal residence and can give you guidance on what additional funding might be appropriate into that Medicaid asset protection trust. There's sort of an, uh, an art and a science to that conversation, and an elder law attorney is best positioned to be able to have that conversation with a, a client. So if somebody is kind of thinking about the future and how to protect assets from long-term care expenses, that would be the time to, uh, to talk to an elder law attorney. Agreed. And, and I think the, the big key with some of those discussions are when you have the question come into your mind, that's a great time to call the elder law attorney and schedule an appointment. Because even if you're not quite ready, that conversation can help give you guidance as to when you will be ready. Or you may find out that it would have been better maybe to start a little sooner because there's some other opportunities that are there. But like I tell folks who come to see us for estate planning, a lot of times folks feel bad that they haven't updated their documents in 20 years or whatever it may be. And I said, well, we haven't needed them. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's a good thing. So really the, the concept is let's get you taken care of now and moving forward. Very good. Yep. I agree. Another time that you should talk to an elder law attorney is if, estate planning hasn't been done. And in that instance, there, there might be a loved one who is struggling to be able to communicate. Maybe they're losing capacity or they've lost capacity and the family needs to have the legal authority to be able to make decisions on that individual's behalf. And so it becomes necessary to apply for, you know, to petition the court for guardianship and an elder law attorney can walk a family through that process and often in that case there might need to be a medicaid application that's filed alongside of that guardianship petition and so an elder law attorney can can help out with that whole stage in life great points there yeah. thomas great points and i would refer folks back to your blog digest from today because there are a number of great articles uh, to kind of think about. And as we up uh, approach Thanksgiving here, I think this is a good time to think through some of this because you may be in a position to have some of these conversations with your family members. So Thomas, if folks have questions, where can they find you? You can find me at viclaw.org. Viclaw.org. How about you, Seth? And you can locate us at noblesvilleattorney.com, um, the web address where our uh, practice is located. So we hope everyone has a great rest of the week, and we'll talk to you next time.